Hey guys, how's it going? So in this tutorial, I'll be showing you guys how to plot the molecular orbitals of a molecule or a crystal using quantum espresso. So in order to, you know, plot the molecular orbitals such as the highest occupied molecular orbital, HOMO, you must have seen these in many research papers and even learned about them in college. So um, quantum espresso, you know, can be used to plot the molecular orbitals for either the highest or the lowest or any other molecular orbital for that matter. Although in research papers such as this one, you might have seen that people usually provide the HOMO and LUMO of either the crystals and even more popularly for, you know, the molecules. So in this tutorial, we'll be using quantum espresso to get the molecular orbitals for benzene and as well as for silicon. So we'll be able to reproduce this paper as well as this paper using quantum espresso so i think it is a good tool and a skill to have if you are working in the field of gft and especially if you're using quantum espresso because then you can uh, you know give plots of homo lumo in your research papers and you know um, study exciting physics um, through these so what we'll be doing is we'll be using the pp.x utility of quantum espresso so if you google about it then you will find out the details about the input file for the pp.x so essentially it is a post processing tool hence the name pp and it basically consists of two parts in its input so the first part that is the m percent input pp contains the you know input regarding what property you want to extract from your system and the second part basically just plots it and writes it to a file which is suitable for plotting or can be read by external software. And one more important thing to note here is that whenever you are going to run pp.x, you first have to run an STF calculation using pw.x because the results from that will be extracted to calculate the desired quantity such as the charge density or the molecular orbitals, etc. So in our case, I mean, as you can notice from here, plot num uh, this particular variable so you can set it to a number of values and so as many values you see here you can do as many things so in our case we'll be using 7 which basically gives the contribution of selected wave functions or in simpler words it basically gives you psi squared that is the square of the molecular orbital and if you are you know plotting the molecular orbital at gamma point then you can also specify whether you want the sign of gamma orbital or not and then you will be able to get positive and negative orbitals but if you are not using a gamma point then of course um, you cannot get a positive and negative part because um, you know there will be a complex and the uh, molecular orbitals will be complex therefore there will be a real part as well as imaginary part but you cannot really like combine those and plot them so you need to square them and then you only get a positive number and then you cannot you know get any sign from it and but if you are you know using a gamma point then you can specify this particular um, you know l sign is equal to true true and then you will be um, you will essentially plot psi square multiplied by the sign of the molecular orbital but in case of complex molecular orbitals there is no sign because there is a positive part then a real part so it gets complicated so you just get the size square so i guess that is enough information for now so um as you have seen in my past tutorials i use brai to get make an input file for silicon and i use brai as well to make the input file for benzene and the input files look somewhat like this so for benzene the input file is pretty simple we are performing an input uh, an SCF calculation and then I specify the pseudo potential directory and I told quantum espresso to plot the forces as well as stress and then I made a large enough unit cell an orthorhombic unit cell so that there is at least 10 angstrom or 11 angstrom of vacuum on all three sides and um, then the you know number of atoms is 12 because he's 6 H6 and then two types of atoms occupations are fixed and one important thing you are noticing here is n band is equal to 16. So why I did that is so that quantum espresso calculates some energy values for the unoccupied orbitals as well. Because in order to plot LUMO, you will need the information about the 
unoccupied orbitals or bands in words of you know condensed matter physics so uh, I specified the n band is equal to 16 now how I arrive at the number depends on you know what procedure potential you are using so in my case I was using c dot p b e r k j u s and h dot p b e r k j u s so they basically tell me that how many valence func uh, uh, electrons um, are there in this pseudo potential and that will basically help me to get this value. So for hydrogen, of course, there is a single valence electron. So you get six, um, you know, states from hydrogen, but then each electron can, I mean, each orbital can accommodate two electrons. So you only have like three orbitals for hydrogen. And then for C, um, if we go ahead and try to find this PBERKJUS. So it's in my home directory and inside URI C report and C. Okay, C dot PBE, I believe. Yep, here. So this one. And then if I open it with a text editor, then if we look over here, then we will notice that it has two valence electrons from s orbital and two from the p orbital so a total of four so in our case we have six carbon atoms therefore four six are 24 and um, so 24 and uh, electrons from carbon and six electrons from hydrogen that makes it like 30 total electrons and since each orbital can accommodate two electrons so we have like 15 occupied orbitals but uh, we also need to get a LUMO so we can also specify one more orbital to get the LUMO and you can even make this number even higher because what happens in some cases is that the orbitals are degenerate so what this means is for example if you look over here for benzene then you'll notice that this is the LUMO but there are two sets of you know lowest unoccupied molecular orbitals because they are degenerate they have the same eigenvalue or eigenenergies and similarly the HOMOs are degenerate as well so what we can do is we can increase the number of bands specified and then we can you know we are going to perform only a gamma point calculation and make sure that you say gamma over here because then it can take advantages of you know gamma optimized calculations and uh, then yeah serial potentials and the coordinates that's it so you uh, make sure to add all these input file links in the description down below if you guys have any trouble but i think this should be pretty straightforward and then what you're going to do is you're going to run this SCF calculation which maybe I'll skip for this uh, video because it can take a lot of time but what we can do is we can run the molecular orbitals plot because I already have you know um, ran the SCF calculation once so we'll come back to the directory of benzene and then we will be going to the this input file over here so this is the input file for pp.x and i'll explain how it you know helps you to calculate the molecular orbitals so first you have the input pp name list in which you will specify the prefix which should be the same as in your scf calculation so here my prefix for scf and then you will specify the temporary files directory which in my case was again temp so these should be really same then fill plot is just a file which will store the data temporarily for use when plotting it and then plot num is equal to 7 is for molecular orbitals for other properties you will use another number and then k point is equal to 1 so in our case we are only performing the calculation at the gamma point so if you look at the output file then you'll notice that um, only energy values for the gamma points are calculated that is here so gamma point and then 16 energies so in our case, um, we are only doing it at the gamma point, so our k point is equal to 1 basically means this. But if you run the calculation for several k points um, by specifying those explicitly, or even if you give a grid, then Quantum Espresso will list out the k points, then you can, you know, give the particular number of the k point in which order they appear to get the uh, orbital for that particular k point. So in our case, for gamma, we'll use k point is equal to 1. And then k band is equal to 16 basically specifies the which orbital you want. So in our case, 16 refers to the first LUMO and 15 would refer to, I'm sorry, um, 16, yeah, I was correct, okay, yeah, because they are a total number of 30 electrons. So 16 would refer to the first LUMO and 
then we have the person plot name list where n file is equal to one basically means that here we are from here we are getting only one file i think we can even skip this it will default to one and then file pb1 basically means that the first file that i mean um, you know this one again basically means that um, what we can do is sometimes we can use several of these files we can calculate several properties at once and then combine them in a linear combination and then plot them at once so in our case um, we'll be only plotting a single file at once so we have file pp1 is equal to the same as you use in input pb and then the weight so of course if there were multiple files that we were trying to plot then n file will be more than one and then you will have multiple file pbs and then you can specify the weights for each of those files and then output format is equal to six refers to that we will get a you know molecular orbit in a dot cube format which is a pretty popular format for you know molecular orbitals and even Gaussian uses it and is maybe even called the Gaussian cube format and also um, it can be easily read by Vesta so if you guys have watched my Vesta tutorials and you'll know that um, Vesta is a really good software and as you can see here I just double clicked on the dot cube file that I had generated from a previous run and as you can see over here it generates a nice little molecular orbital for i mean it doesn't generate but it plots them very nicely for benzene so we'll close that for the moment and also i'll just go ahead and delete this 16 file so that you can see this calculation happening happening okay so coming back to the file yeah so output format 6 is for dot cube however there are variety of other formats as well but this one is the most convenient for me and then file out is basically the name of the output file that you'll be plotting or you know using with external softwares and the night flag is equal to three basically means that you're getting a 3d plot you can also get 1d and 2d plots for several properties but for molecular orbitals i mean it is best um, represented using a 3d plot so that's it but now comes the catch when running the calculations such as this so here as you can see i'm in my benzene directory but what happens is if i run this you know pp.x calculation um, let me see if I have it in my history because I am really lazy when it comes to typing okay no 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 ah. too bad anywho so we will just type it out once again blah 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 okay MPI run I mean it's not necessary to run in parallel but just um, and then the address and that is um, in the previous directory inside the QE folder and then inside the bin folder and then we have the pp.x binary and then the name of the input file that is ppmo.n within triangular braces and then the output file pp you know dot out so yes but here comes the catch when you run this of course you get an error and if you open the file the output file that is ppmo.out you'll um okay this is rather weird never get this kind of error though i mean i it doesn't work usually but not this way ah i see the problem is i think i for my last tutorial, I showed you how to install Quantum Espresso and therefore there is no pb.x direct um, binary right now here. So what we'll have to do is we'll have to compile it. So I'll probably pause the video once again and also if you guys are interested then you can watch me compile it. So basically you just go to the Quantum Espresso directory and then give the command make pp. So that should be enough to compile the post-processing utility of the quantum espresso and it will generate a pp.x binary in your bin folder. So let's just wait for it or maybe I'll just skip it forward or maybe pause it. Okay, so here it is. So it is now finally compiled. So we'll go back to the benzene directory and then we will try to run that command once again so here we'll run the command pp.x um, then the input file and the output file and what you'll notice is now the output file looks something like this 
but you will soon notice an error. Yeah, so writing data to file failed due to some weird error, but luckily enough, I found a way to circumvent this error. That is, you just avoid giving the input and output file. So you can even give the input in standard output input uh, using the terminal. So you just run the utility and then it will, you know, it will it will not prompt you, but it will wait for some input. So what you'll go do is you'll go to the ppmo.in whatever input file, you know, and then just copy the contents of the input pp name list, or you can even type them one by one. So you can even, you know, do something like typing input pp or something. But what I'll do is I'll just paste all that and then hit enter. And then we'll calculate this particular, uh, you know, property and store it in this file. And then once you see the message writing data to file, then you can go ahead and copy this ampersand plot name list and then paste that as well. So I'll just go ahead and paste that in the terminal and hit enter. And then it will just, you know, plot the, ah, I forgot to change the name here. So it will be loom of 14 gamma dot cube in the output. I should have named it 16. I'm not sure. I, I think I forgot to rename it. Anywho, so here's the lumo 14 gamma dot cube. And if you double click on it, it will, you can open it with Vesta. And you can see here we have a nice little lowest unoccupied molecular orbital for benzene. And if you compare it to the literature, it matches this pi 4 molecular orbital. So here it is. Um, yeah, it matches the pi 4 molecular orbital. Although not perfectly, but that is the case when you're using, you know, different, uh, you know, DFT calculations. So this one was done with um, Gaussian basis sets while we are using plain wave basis sets. But still, it just, you know, goes on to show how powerful quantum espresso can be even with when you're working with molecules. So, so this is how you can, you know, get the plots for molecular orbitals of benzene or any other molecule or nanocluster for that matter. And here's the other HOMO, uh, oh, sorry, LUMO uh, by five. I'm not sure why I have named all these like weird, like I've named it HOMO for some reason, but it's the LUMO. And then we have, if I mean, I did these calculations roughly just to check my theories. And here we have the HOMO, which matches this HOMO, yeah. So I ran some calculations early on just to test it. And yeah, so you can generate the molecular orbitals pretty accurately. And similarly for silicon, I use the um, input file. So here's the silicon unit cell generated. Uh, the input file is generated using BORAI and it's pretty standard. And then you only just go ahead and specify N band large enough so that it also calculates the molecular orbitals for the or the energy values for the unoccupied orbitals. And then you will go ahead and um, run the pp.x utility and specify the K point number as well as the band number, which will specify the molecular orbital essentially. And as you can see over here, um, here we have homo 16 cube. And if you look at it like this, then you'll notice that it matches pretty much this particular homo. And here I use the L sign is equal to true so that I have the positive and negative parts as well. And then I have the LUMO as well, which is, I believe this now. Yeah, I, I think I did an, another calculation using a supercell for that. And here is that particular LUMO at the X point. And in this case, you can notice that it's not at the gamma point. So I probably, you know, in my input file, I specified something like I created the K points automatically, but then in the output, I must have, you know, um, checked to see which of the K points. So in the output, they have for this K point, then for um, this K point, and then for this K point. So there are two K points over here, right? So I probably used K point is equal to two to get uh, the micro orbitals corresponding to this K point. And that is basically the X point. So, um, in the pp homo dot n i specified k point equal to two and then k band for the homo so that's it that's how you plot molecular orbitals using quantum espresso i hope you guys enjoyed this video and in case you did then don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this thanks for watching and have a great day